Thank you for watching Back Porch Wisdom with Pastor Rob Wynn. We pray that this weekly broadcast will be a blessing to you. And now here is Pastor Rob Wynn with today's message. Hi, this is Pastor Rob Wynn. I want to welcome you to Back Porch Wisdom today. Where a theme really is, we want Jesus to perfect us in faith, but we're talking about it from the standpoint of knowing about resurrection power and what it does and how it, how it affects our lives. And I'd been talking about it from the standpoint of that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God. Romans uh, 1.4 Declared to be the Son of God uh, accord, by, with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. And so you see that resurrection is ultimate, ultimately important because it influenced every aspect of Jesus' ministry. See, he was born of a virgin. I mean, the, whole, the resurrection power was, was intact right there. He lived a sinless life, so resurrection power was right there with him. He died an atoning death. I'm going to tell you something. He had to come to the point where he reconciled in his mind and in his heart that it was the will of God for him to go to the cross. And when he got on that cross, can you imagine being there and he says... He's going to be separated from God. And it's the first time he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He had never been without resurrection power. And you see, uh, John, the, the first chapter, the uh, fourth verse says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And so we can't do without resurrection power. In fact, without resurrection power, we've got nothing. Listen, in, uh, it establishes life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Or without lack of quantity or quality. Or you could say super abundantly. And so in uh, the establishing of resurrection life, Paul makes an argument in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 because he's dealing with some people that do not uh, believe in resurrection life. Now they wanted to be part of Israel and a part of God, but you can't be a part of God and come against resurrection life. So he says in verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 15 to verse 19, he says, And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and our faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ whom He did not raise up. If in fact the dead do not rise, for if the dead do not rise, Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile or useless, and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. In, if in this life only we have hope, in Christ, we are of all men the most des deservingly of pity. And so you see uh, four major things that it says right here. Without the resurrection, everything is futile. Everything is useless. Everything is empty. Everything is false. And we, if you've gotten born again, you know that it's not false because you know that you've been delivered from the power of darkness, Colossians uh, 1.12, and you've been translated into the kingdom of His dear Son in love. And you know that the, the devil has no more power over you, but, but the power that you walk in is God's kind of power. And so you find out here, he said, our preaching's useless. Our faith is empty. We are false witnesses. Uh, if the dead, uh, will ne the dead will never be raised. Your faith is useless. Uh, I said that. You are still in your sins, and all who have trusted in Christ are still lost. And we are to be pitied above all men. In a book called In Glory 
uh, excuse me, The Glory of Christ by a man named Peter Lewis, he wrote this. If Jesus has not risen from the dead, his own expectations are disappointed and his repeated promises proven false, his assurance is worthless. In that case, whoever else the Nazarene might have been, he certainly was not and is not Lord. If Jesus has not risen from the grave, his disciples are incompetent transmitters of of uh, truth. For this doctrine was the corner, get this, the cornerstone of their apostolic teaching. Worse, they are actually false witnesses claiming to be eyewitnesses of a miracle that never truly happened. And if Jesus has not risen from the grave, if his body once lay molding in Joseph's tomb and is now forgotten dust, then death is still victorious and final. There is no good news for the dying. If for a Savior we have only a ghost, then for heaven we shall only have a dream. And we know for a fact that it's, when you're born again, you know for a fact that it's no dream. If the resurrection is not true, what matter? What does it matter if uh, uh, Noah built an ark? If uh, Moses led the children of Israel into Canaan? If, if on the way to doing things, uh, uh, leaving Egypt, actually Moses parted the Red Sea? What does it matter if when they went into Canaan land, the, the Jordan River uh, uh, went back and they walked over on dry land? What difference does it make if uh, Jesus walked on water or if he fed multitudes of people or if the church in the book of Acts grew exponentially fast? Paul write, or Paul's written letters. If the resurrection is not true, it's all totally worthless and it's useless. You can't have a living faith with a dead Savior. Paul goes on in his argument in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and he says, If the dead do not rise, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. He said it's just utterly, it's useless what we're doing if the dead do not rise. See, of what are the considered the great faiths or religions of the world, Christianity alone stakes its entire claim and bases its entire existence on the resurrection of its founder. Nothing more, nothing less. Christianity is not based on a set of ideas, creeds, morals, beliefs, lifestyles, disciplines, or practices. Christianity should and, and does produce all these things. But genuine biblical Christianity is based entirely and exclusively on the resurrection of its founder, Jesus Christ. And so if you don't know Jesus today, it's time to come to Jesus because the evidence is overwhelming. You can, according to this book, you actually, you go to Simon Greenleaf. It's the testimony of the four evangelists. He was a founding father of Harvard Law. And he came, he had written many treatises on, on the rules of evidence. And he came because he applied the evidence rules to the gospel. As he came to the conclusion that Jesus was God in the flesh and raised from the dead. And so we can prove it by the rule of law. Now, let's pray. You'd ask Jesus in your heart to come back to God. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord and that you raised Him from the dead so that I could be your child. I am now saved and cleansed of my sin. In Jesus' name. And if you're backslidden, you say with me, I come back to Jesus and I commit my life to follow Him. In Jesus' name. Now, uh, if you're in a 40-mile radius of us, 
50 mile radius or whatever you deem close enough to, to uh, come, go on Cornerstone Church, the number four, the letter U, and uh, you can find directions of the church and you can find out what we believe and you can hear other messages. God bless you and have a good day. If you're ever in the Linden, Alabama area, we invite you to worship with us at Cornerstone Church. For more information and other resources, visit our website at cornerstonechurchforyou.com. Bonner Media specializes in websites, videos, and graphic design right here in Alabama. Need your website maintained weekly to include your latest events, messages, and sermons? Bonner Media is ready to integrate, merge, and display all forms of media to promote on the latest platform of your choice to radio, television, or social media. Bonner Media. Websites, videos, and graphics.